us tonight. A case of mistaken identity has a Chickasaw woman speaking out. She says she and her children were terrified by a rape. She thought it was law enforcement. Now, according to the Mobile County Sheriff Paul Burge, that was not the case. Brendan Kirby has been looking into this, trying to figure out exactly what happened. And Brenda, this is still something of a mystery, right? Yeah, it is, Byron and Lanise. Tabwana Hampton says that she thought it was the SWAT team, but the sheriff says it was bounty hunters, and he believes that they were searching for a suspect at the wrong house. Tabwana Hampton says she was awakened early Wednesday morning to the sound of shouting in the bullhorns, demanding that everyone inside her home on 4th Street in Chickasaw come outside. When I peeped out the window, I couldn't see anything because it was so many bright lights facing towards my house that I couldn't really react or say anything or see anything to see what was going on. The minute I opened the door, they had guns at us. They was all surrounded us. Hampton says she and her 13-year-old son were handcuffed and put in the back of the vehicle and that the men told them that they were the SWAT team looking for a guy named Marlon Marshall. But Mobile County Sheriff Paul Birch tells me he learned from deputies that it was bounty hunters. Court records show that Marshall failed to appear for a court hearing in March on a string of theft charges, prompting Mobile County Circuit Judge Ben Brooks to issue an arrest warrant. In such cases, the bond is revoked, but judges typically give bonding companies a few weeks to track down the absconding defendants. Worldwide Bonds wrote the bond for Marshall, but that company tells me it didn't have bounty hunters looking for him. Whoever showed up at the home on 4th Street appears to have been mistaken. During one arrest, Marshall listed an address at the same street number as Hampton, but on 4th Avenue in Chickasaw. Chris McNeil, a mobile bail bondsman who serves as president of the Alabama Bail Bond Association acknowledges that bounty hunters have broad powers to track down fugitives. Yes, there are times that we can go into an individual's house to recover somebody, and yes, there are times that we can cross state lines and go and bring somebody back from another state when law enforcement may not be able to do that. But McNeil says the legislature several years ago created a bail bonding board that regulates the industry. He says the conduct that Hampton describes would violate the rules governing bounty hunters. The bail bondsmen don't handcuff anybody that is not a wanted uh, individual for failing to appear in court. McNeil says that the state board investigates complaints. He says it gets about 100 a year. Penalties can range from a fine all the way to revocation of the license or even criminal charges. Reporting live from the News Center, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.